a sweet looking toolbox I've got. Ah, it's not a toolbox if you can read the titles of videos. Uh, let's have a look inside this box here. It's a case. What's inside the case? It's a diesel heater! And all the gubbins that go with said diesel heater. I've actually wanted one of these for a very long time. And uh, Banggood were um, good enough to send me one of these. So we can play with it and test it and see what it's like. And I hope to be able to take this to oh, track days, drift events, all sorts of things and have it set up and actually um, not freeze to death during the winter. Uh, one of the main features I picked this one. Uh, the first reason is its portability. It is an absolutely 100% self-contained portable diesel heater and doodads and all the bits. And second reason is its Bluetooth control. Not the same Bluetooth control as the Max Speeding Rods heater we saw because I have been through the manual and it uses a completely different app which I'm going to have to go and get on the App Store and install my phone and hopefully the Pixel 6 Pro will connect to this first time and we won't have to mess around trying to get it to work. So uh, there's an instruction manual in there. And all the bits. There's a... Uh, come on, unsquash. We've got uh, the pipe work. Come on now, play nice. Come on. Exhaust pipe, air intake pipe. Oh, shh, air um, feed return pipe from wherever. No, uh, not feed return pipe, feed pipe to blow air into wherever you want it to blow. Uh, this is the main power cable, connects to the outside of the heater, and that connects to your battery, power supply, cigarette lighter, etc, etc. And other bits inside are... Ah, oh, we appear to have sustained some uh, in-transit damage. There is an exhaust silencer and some rattly screws. A few more bracketry bits, I'll have to see what they are for exactly. Air intake filter. An output cap vent. And a length of fuel line. And, right, I'm going to... Spin this round now and we'll have a look inside the box. Well, hopefully from there, can you see right through the back? So the bottom of the box has lots of holes in it for ventilation. Okay, yes, at the moment the heater is upside down. So this is the exhaust. It goes out into a very nicely heat isolated uh, mount down there. Now I'm going to zoom you in on that. Let me show you. Down there, nope, other, the other zoom, the other other zoom. So you can see in there that the hot exhaust is separated by lots of uh, metal bracketry that's got lots of space around about it, so it's not actually going to get hot, it should stay relatively cool down there, not melt the plastic, and it's got a nice uh, thermal sleeve around the uh, ex hot exhaust. The air intake is the kind of insulated Cardboard kind, and mine has come off of the air intake at the end here. It is not detached anymore. It has suffered the transit damage. Now we will need to put that back on there and tighten that uh, jubilee clip back up. And the only other bit of damage we have sustained is a bit of uh, grill has come off the box. It's got, wait a minute, they're on that way, I can show you. You can see them there, the ventilation grill covers. There's two on the top flap and there's two on the bottom. Well, in my case at the moment, there is one on the back bottom. Ah, I'll stick that on later. We don't need that just now. So, that is the outside. Should stand like this. Right, let's make this make sense. Let's move it back a little bit. So, it looks like a toolbox. That's the back. That's the front. Uh, Air intake in there, remote control, LCD, not LCD, or that's remote control, that's the LCD controller. Power in there, fuel in there, air in there. That's the other side. And then on the back is where your hot air comes out and your hot exhaust. And, yeah. I wonder if you're supposed to pipe 
that bad boy, uh, one of these ends is slightly less mushed than the other. There you go, that fits in there. Ta-da! Ah, it's all become clear now. That should bend up to there. And then one of these brackets, or two of these brackets, will fit on there, and your exhaust will bend up and your silencer will go on the top. Wait, is there a picture of it doing that? Let me see if I can put on screen what it should look like. Ah, uh, kind of like... Kind of a little bit like this, this picture, where you can see the exhaust. There's a bracket there holding the exhaust up, and there's the air intake being held up in that position. We might eventually get around to doing that. The astute among you may have noticed that the fuel tank is sitting at the back here open, as this is supposed to bolt onto the outside of your box. It goes on about there. And then you feed your fuel from the tank back round into the inside. Now the other all-in-one here that we had, the 12, 24, 240 volt one, the fuel tank was in the inside of the box. Some people liked it on the inside, some people didn't like it on the inside because the heat from the heater can heat up your fuel tank and your fuel and possibly be dangerous. So this ends up on the outside. Some people don't like it on the outside, some people do. Me, personally, I don't care if it's on the outside, it doesn't really... It kind of... Kind of detracts from the portability and the storage of the... Because obviously you now can't sit it down and stack things on it and put it places. Then again, you can also remove the fuel tank and take it off when you're... Moving? Storing? Things like that? Anyway. Alright, I'm gonna build this the way it's supposed to be built and then we'll plug it in and test it. Okay, so I have assembled the heater, and by assembled, I have bolted the fuel tank onto the back, or the front, depending how, or the side, depending on how you view life. I've given it a fuel connection at the bottom here, which just meant I uh, drilled a hole in the tank, fished the fitting through, screwed it together, two rings seal uh, the tank to, from leaking, uh, bit of oil pipe, uh, fuel pipe rather, onto the fuel pump there, air intake on, and uh, wobbling about a little bit, uh, could probably do a cable tie to secure it. Same at the other end, the exhaust gets poked into that hole, and then it just kind of uh, rather wobbles about there in that fitting. I apologise if you can hear the rain in the background, it's trying its hardest to rain the hardest it's ever rained at the moment. So that's that all um, put together. You don't have to touch insides, everything's all uh, ready to go in there. We just need to give it power now. Now, that also brings it to its first usage scenario, which is of course, emergency heat. So, this is the year 2022, and we are suffering probably one of the greatest uh, energy crises that uh, humanity has ever faced. Well, especially in Europe, anyway. There is literally, like, no gas, and no gas means no electricity. So, this could provide you with a, at least a heat source in the event of catastrophic failure of the mains grid system, assuming you have... Uh, a generator for backup power, or uh, battery banks if you've managed to collect a large collection of 12-volt um, lead-acid batteries perhaps, or uh, power packs, that sort of thing. So where is the end of this power cable? So I have taken the normal power cable that came with it, and I chopped the end off it. It was two uh, eye terminals, which of course you could screw onto a battery or whatnot, and I've used my connector blocks here and I've put a cigarette lighter on the end but with the connector blocks that means I could just quickly unclip them and then put on a set of, uh, I don't know where they are, let's just say for example crocodile clips, you know, on crocodile leads and I could clip it onto a battery to uh, make it make power that way. What we're going to do just now is, and because it's lying on the floor next to me, <sighs> giant 20 kilogram 2,400 watt hour power oak uh, battery bank power thing. So what we should do is plug this in 
And actually see if this will give us enough power output to start, because it's rated at 9 amps, which should be like a hundred and something watts of power. But it should be enough to start this heater. Right, press and hold till the battery fills up, then it turns on. And press and hold till the light comes on, and DC comes on. Uh, the screen has lit up on the uh, diesel heater. Not that you can see it, because it's, it's not the brightest screen from this angle. Now if we press uh, the on off button, pressing on off button, go! It says on, I've, have we got it set to some temperature? No, we're using power a thing at the moment, so we'll just leave it in its lowest power setting for starting up, because that'll hopefully draw the least amount of current. I can see on the display on the blue edit showing 43 watts at the moment, and Hopefully now, this will glow plug up and light, hopefully, and then we shall see it running. I'm going to take a carbon monoxide reading from the exhaust as well, and we'll do that comparison. I'll bring you back uh, once it's running. Well, uh, the uh, Blue Yeti um, absolutely failed to let this light. It never drew any more than 50 watts out of that port and it completely failed to ignite. It was like it was, it almost felt like it was current limited, but to about like half of its output. It's weird, because I can see it on the um, uh, power supply over there. It's now drawing like the full five amps. And I can hear it's uh, trying to light. It's kind of also a bit flooded in there, full of fuel, but yeah, so that didn't work uh, running from this particular power bank, but the theory sound, Assuming your power bank can output uh, enough power to run it, it should uh, run in light like a car battery. And that is making a lot of smoke at the moment because I say it flooded it because the power bank uh, didn't light it. So I'm going to let this run and burn off all that uh, fumes and then we'll come back to it and do a carbon monoxide reading. Okay, the cigarette plug into the uh, power oak here uh, failed spectacular. Well, it didn't fail. This didn't fail. I'm sorry. I mean, the uh, running field, it wouldn't give any more than 50 watts out. I do not understand why. So we have opted for the power oak on AC. So this is a mains power 240 uh, volt to 12 volt DC adapter. So this is the mains power lead and it's just plugged into the back end of the, the, you know, the three pin uh, mains plug on the back. And then we'll use the AC side to power this and we will wire in the heater to this. So this would probably be an ideal setup because most of the power banks, power supply things, they all give out a much higher power rating on the AC circuit than do the 12 volts. So one of these, I mean this one is, what is it, it's, uh, on the side there, it's 12 volts and 30 amps. So that's, you could run like pretty much three diesel heaters off this one box. So I shall wire in the Power connection on there, and we will fire up again. Okay, the red is connected to the positive side, the black is connected to the negative side. Should you use uh, terminals for screwing? Yes, you should. I've just jammed the wires in there. Don't touch these ones, these are spicy, and they'll give you a dunt. And now I should be able to turn on this bit. One, two, three. That'll stay on. Now we can put the AC on. AC is turned on. Uh, I don't think this actually has a... Oh no, that light is... That, that very, very faint LED there is lit and is currently consuming 40 watts sitting there doing nothing. Fan isn't even spinning. That's interesting. Okay, so now we should be able to plug the heater in and this time actually fire up. Where is the end of the wire? Oh, there it is on the floor. Okay, take our plug. Plug it in. Goes through its self-test lighting up thing. And this time, we should be able to fire it straight up. Go. Starting. Start heating. Indeed you shall, madam. And then hopefully on here, we'll see this go up to like 100 and something watts and not just 40. Because 40 is bad. 40 is not enough. 
Okay, that's better. Now we can see. There we go, 180 watts or 170 minus the 30 to 40 of that one is about right for 130 uh, starting up power. So it'll do the glow plug and then the fan and the fuel pump and it'll fire up. Uh, it's good that it's actually outputting what the wattage that we want to see, which means this will work. This this setup is fine. This is your emergency uh, power setup. So imagine if you were in the middle of a blackout, no heating for your uh, house, you could have a heater like this, a power bank, a mains power to 12 volt uh, output, and that would give you the ability to at least generate some amount of heat and perhaps, uh, you know, save a life and keep uh, your family alive uh, this winter. Right, I've currently got the heater running at maximum power, and you can see on there it's drawing 80 watts. Some of that will be the uh, power supply itself. It's nice and warm, there's a good hot air output coming out the stream. Now let's get the uh, carbon monoxide thing and I'm going to point it above the exhaust over there and see what reading we get. I have a reading of 10, 11, 13, ah it's getting hot there. So 13 I got at worst. I'm going to tell you just now, I also tried it on low power and got pretty much the same reading. Although, I have tuned this heater slightly and we'll come back to that tuning bit in a minute. What I'm going to do just now is move this camera over a little bit. Move this camera over. And we're going to get the thermal imaging in. Right, I fired up the thermal imaging. Uh, hopefully you can see there on the output pipe that it's about 70 odd degrees. And my goodness up there you can see the exhaust gas venting. Uh, let me see if I can twiddle this up a little bit. Oh, it is. You can see the gas, uh, oh, it's heating up my light rather nicely. You can see the exhaust, hot exhaust gas coming out. So here's the outside of the case. Obviously we can see the hot end. Cold end. I will now go ahead and open the case. Move the things out of the way. Open the case so we can see the insides. Uh, there we can see, we we'll pan across the case temperature. So the case is slightly cooler than the actual output, and you can see the exhaust temperature down the bottom there is way over 170 degrees. Let me change the range for you and see if it'll give us a reading of the actual temperature of that. Right, there you go. So that insulated exhaust is currently sitting at 263 degrees. That, that is some hot insulation. I don't think the, well let's be able to see the, that temperature's wrong for, because it's a shiny metal surface and it gives us the wrong thing. But, yeah, yeah, that exhaust bit doesn't lie, that's, that's hot in there, there's definitely, there's one very hot spot right in the, in the curve, but it's basically 200 plus degrees and that's insulated, yeah, we might have to revisit that with some better insulation, uh, right, let me put that back down to a normal, more normal range, 
That's better, we can see all the hot spots. But apart from that, uh, power wires aren't particularly hot. Uh, my, uh, what do you call it? The AC to DC adapters, not particularly warm either. Yeah, and there's a uh, nice to warm. Wouldn't keep anything in this uh, boxy bit when the heater's running, because it'll either catch on fire or melt. Okay, there's a couple of, well, interesting things the heater does. Uh, I mean, it's got an auto start and an auto, auto start, auto start time and how long it runs for during that start time. Uh, there's a setting for, you can fill the fuel tank and tell it you've filled the fuel tank. And I'm kind of hoping that it stops once the fuel tanks run out. Like you tell the fuel tank if you've got a five, a 10 or a 15 liter fuel tank. And then I'm kind of hoping that it, well, you can also tell it the size of the fuel pump. And once you've told it the size of the fuel pump, it should be able to work out how much fuel it's used and shut down before the uh, tank runs out. But we don't sadly have time to test that uh, at the moment. Now, the other and most, not most important feature, but other interesting feature is it's supposed to do Bluetooth. Now in the manual, it says the app uh, is called Air Heater BLE and is available for iOS and Android. Now I could only find it in the app store for Apple things if I Googled it and it could not find it on the Play Store. So I emailed HCalorie and they were kind enough to send me a link to the Air Heater app. So we are going to screen capture this right now. Start screen recording. Uh, record audio, show touches, start. Okay, we are now recording. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so I've already gone and got Air Heater BLE. Connection failed. I haven't asked you to do anything yet. I want you to scan while using the app, right. Oh look, there's the heater. Ta-da! Nice. So, there we go. We have actually got... This heater is connected via Bluetooth. Uh, does this mean that we can go and do things? Uh, push to turn off. Power up and power down. Run mode. Smart mode. Level. Level mode, all right, levels, power mode, and smart mode's temperature, you turn temperature up and down. At least from this we can see the battery, housing temperature, internal temperature, we turn the temperature up and down, yes, 24, 25, 24, and if we set it to level, we can just, no, wait, let me set it to level, level mode, let it set, and then we can turn the speed up and down from the 10 levels, yes, excellent, actually controlling this from the Bluetooth. Uh, altimeter still says zero, can't change that. Uh, guessing that one is the actual temperature that it thinks it's at, which is 18 degrees. Push to turn off. I mean, that bit works. See, we can't fiddle with any of the other settings from here, that would have been nice. It's oxygen poor to run the heater in the sealed room for a long time. You're right, you will get carbon monoxide poisoning. Slight shame that the heater here display doesn't actually show what it's doing but I can see a housing temperature 140 that's that's fine um, right okay well I suppose other than turning it off does that work did, did it do it I said push to turn off and it didn't Do you have to press and hold I'm, I'm, I'm doing the thing ah you do have to press and hold and then it goes into standby. Nice. We did a thing. So I know some people wonder why you would want Bluetooth uh, control over your heater, but it's sometimes nice just to be able to fiddle about with the heater from the other end of your camper van or whatnot. Uh, also, Bluetooth sometimes got quite a decent range on it. So if you're, I don't know, say you're walking up towards your camper van and you want to turn your heater on so it's like on and running before you get there, you can just turn it on with the Bluetooth and away it goes and it'll do the thing. Right, well that's the Bluetooth and that absolutely works now and I'm quite impressed with that. Right, let's stop screen recording. Stop screen recording. The other notable function this heater has, as well as Bluetooth, is 
automatic start and stop. I'll read this out to you. In automatic mode, when the cab temperature reaches the set temperature, it will automatically turn off, turn off after 30 seconds delay. When the cab temperature is lower than the set temperature by 2 degrees, it will automatically turn on after 30 seconds display. So this is a feature that the afterburner has on its thing. So the heater will run up to the temperature that you set and then it will turn off, as in off off, it will stop burning. Then once the temperature drops 2 degrees below the temperature you've set, it will fire back up and go through the whole start up sequence, ignite the glow plug, put fuel in and burn up again. And it'll do that indefinitely until you turn it off. So that's one of those features that uh, I say is on the afterburner and people really really like that feature and granted if it's in a camper van or you know something that's running on leisure cells that kind of setup will murder them because you obviously are having multiple shutdown and start up cycles but if you run say like this on AC or AC battery it's not as much of a problem like this monster's 2400 watts it can easily handle starting up and stopping a few times so for the automatic start stop to work, if you just press the power button takes you back to the outside, that temperature there, 19 degrees, uh, we're not in temperature mode, we need to press and hold this to get into temperature mode. Oh no, you don't press and hold, you just press it, press it once. Right, that puts us into temperature mode, so it's trying to get to 22 degrees, but let's make it more like uh, 17. So if we set that to 17, 17 degrees and then you'll see the room temperature is 19 so we're 2 degrees above room temperature which means that after 30 seconds what this should should do is now realise it's at temperature and shut down let's watch ta-da it has done the thing Realised it was 2 degrees above temperature and is now going into a full shutdown. And then, obviously, once the temperature in here was to drop 2 degrees back down, it would uh, fire straight back up again. But the sun just come out, so it's not likely to uh, cool down in here again. Let me give you my final thoughts on this kind of all in one style of heater. It's good. Uh, I like it. Uh, I kind of like it. it. Looks like it's inside a like a, a pelican case. It's not a pelican case, by the way, but it looks like it is a pelican case. I mean, it's it is portable. If you could uh, call it that, you can you can certainly pick it up. There are a few featurey things that I don't like. So let us uh, run the scenario of you've set the on and off temperature. Uh, where's where's this box going to be? Is this supposed to be outside? Because if this is outside, then the room set temperature temperature is not going to make a lot of difference because it's going to be outside in the cold. Perhaps if that uh, display there was um, wireless and you could take the display into where you are, that would work. But it's not wireless, it's absolutely attached to the unit. So in that case, are you supposed to bring the whole unit inside where you're going? And if that's the case, then you're going to need a big long extension uh, for the exhaust and it's going to have to be cooled, not cooled, uh, insulated so you don't burn or set fire things. Or the other option is you just run it inside and you get a nice carbon monoxide alarm detector and you just make sure you don't run it till you die, basically. You just uh, ventilate every now and again and do things like that. Slightly disappointed with the uh, Power oak there that it wasn't actually able to run it on the 12 volt socket, but that's a that problem, not a that problem. It totally runs it off the uh, 12 volt adapter. The Bluetooth uh, is nice, it's a, not a gimmick, it is a function, it does the thing. It absolutely connects the here and you can turn it on and off and turn it up and down and so on and so forth and see what temperature things are at and battery level, etc. from your phone, from a Bluetooth, and it's uh, actually working on uh, Android. <laughs> Hello? And there's a nice lady inside it that talks to you. But yeah, all in all, it's a pretty decent uh, standalone little here. Could probably do with better uh, insulation on the exhaust. That's maybe 
an upgrade I would make is to change it to um, something with a much higher uh, insulation rating because it's still it's still hot. Two hundred degrees for your insulation. It's not a million miles away from the two hundred degrees of the exhaust. You just don't stick to it when you touch it. Eh? Just a good little here, and uh, we'll put it to use at some point soon, hopefully. Perhaps we'll be out travelling and we all need uh, portable heat. Any questions, comments, anything like that, always leave them down below and I will try my very best to answer them or send them to someone who can answer them for you. And as always, thanks for watching.